you can match, but they, they, they'll be disappointed that they conceded so many goals in that game, and uh, they'll be able to rectify that. I suppose a lot remains to be seen, Michael, as well. I'll hold the likes of Huber Rigney and uh, Kevin Martin if they're at the start of the game, and how they're actually after their injuries as well. We'll have a big bearing on the game as well. Well, they're very much focusing in, Sir Farr, and we'll wait the Offaly team out onto the pitch here in a moment's time. They're very much focusing in on these five goals that they conceded against Kilkenny the last game. It wasn't that the forwards weren't playing well, but you can't leak out those kind of scores. Well, it's very unusual for Offaly, because usually their, their, their defence will be kind of tight and tough, and I'd say they've analysed it since, and they'll be out today and say, listen, no goal today, guys, and we'll score enough to win the match. Well, here they come. Here comes the Offaly team, and Hubert Trigley just gone through the picture. Kevin Martin gone through there as well, the two players who looked like they were going to miss uh, this All Ireland semi final, but they're there in the lineup. Let's go over to our match commentator, Joe Canning. Thank you very much indeed, Michael. And uh, we see John Troy here out uh, with the rest of the Offaly team. Well, tradition may favour Cork, but tradition has only seen Cork win one All Ireland in the 90s against two for Offaly. And indeed, in the last 20 years since the emergence of the Midlanders as a real hurling force. The record shows Offaly with four All-Irelands, Cork with three. And there are plenty of young people, you know, aged, let's say, between 20 and 25, who cannot remember a time when Offaly were not a major power in this sport, contesting Leinster finals, All-Ireland finals, and so on. This Offaly side shows just one change from the team that scored a facile win over Antrim in the quarterfinals. However, no place for Billy Dooley. He's still on the bench. The great news is that half-backs Hubert Rigney and Kevin Martin are able to start again after what looked really quite horrific injuries here just a fortnight ago. In the midfield, it's uh, J.D. and J.P., that's uh, Johnny Dooley and Johnny Polkington. Great experience there. John Troy is listed on the 40, while Joe Dooley has recovered sufficiently to reclaim a place on the inside forward line alongside John Ryan and Joe Errity. John Parr stepping in beautifully, going around Keenan. Opportunity, CJ Carey, a goal opportunity, and the score! Ken O'Shea winning that one. DJ with a lovely hand pass to Henry Shefflin. It's a book. Quite right, intended for Joe Errity, but he did very well. Here's a chance for Offaly. Chance here. Wonderful play by Offaly. in the attack here, John Troy just taking his eye off, a lovely skill, oh that is a superb goal. And back into the championship arena at Crow Park come Cork, winners here for the last time in 1990, beaten by Kilkenny two years later, but aside from Brian Corcoran, this is a completely reconstructed side by Jimmy Barry Murphy and his team, and it's been a slow process, but gradually they've managed to turn it all around by putting their faith on genuinely true and skillful hurlers. The Cork selectors have opted for an unchanged policy, putting faith in the hurlers who have brought the squad this far. Donalo Cusack is fronted again this afternoon by Dermot O'Sullivan, one of the best fullbacks in the country. It's a consistent half-back line, while Mickey O'Connell is again paired by Mark Landers in midfield. No room for Alan Brown and Kevin Murray in attack. Shawnee McGrath and Neil Ronan start at uh, wing forward and corner forward. Matt Landers spends up a hard challenge from Brian Green. Landers to go for his score from way out the field. Tremendous try by Landers, the captain of Cork. 15 minutes to go. Fergal McCormick, Mc, McGraw got back and it's deep! Gilligan fires it back there. And that is Ollie Baker. And that's a simple start to the second half. And a 
it's up towards Ben O'Connor. Frank Lowell, the one is nearest to him. The mentors down on the field, encouraging their players to give one last effort if they can. O'Connor O'Connor. on their way then to the Munster Championship. A great day for their supporters. They're here in their numbers today and a lot of pressure to Moss Mulcahy perhaps on the man we just saw in our picture there a moment ago, Mickey O'Connell. Yeah, he's been having a great season to date and uh, there's a lot of press uh, during the week about, about Mickey as well and, and maybe rightly so because he's given tremendous performances. It maybe just adds to the, the extra little bit of pressure that you've got to cope with when you get to all our semi-final stage. Uh, there's a big onus on, on Mickey to repeat his feats in, those, in the last two games and uh, I'm sure with Mark Landers uh, and himself they're going to give very good count themselves in midfield but they come up against uh, Johnny Pickleton and Johnny Dooley who are two excellent hurlers as well, as well so they won't get it all the wrong way around the middle of the park We saw on the face of Jeremy Joe Sullivan when he came out there a few moments ago sheer determination Marty Morrissey was telling us that he thought that Jimmy Barry Murphy's men uh, looked a little bit tense and nervous earlier on now you've been in that dressing room and the build up to our Ireland finals is there anything we, or semi-finals even we can, anything we can read into that? Um, I, I'm school, I, I would think the team are probably a bit nervous. I mean, it's their first big occasion in, in Crow Park. Um, they came up yesterday by train. You're probably in your hotel room early this morning, uh, going out for a puck round as they did to Belfry. Then you're back in the stadium at maybe at 1 o'clock. So it's a long time then for throwing the half as three. So um, there probably is a bit of tension there. And uh, it wouldn't be an all Ireland semi-final, I don't think. Or you wouldn't be right if, as a player if you didn't feel a bit of tension or if you didn't feel a bit of nervousness. And uh, uh, that could not be good as well, you know, that they're, they're not taking the off for granted. The cop perception public wise is that maybe they get over this one and get to a final. That's not going to be the case. It's going to be a very, very difficult game against Offaly. Well, looking at things, Cyril Farrell, from the Offaly point of view, the statistics very much favour them. I was mentioning them earlier on. They've played 22 championship matches since 1992 here in Croke Park, won two All-Irelands, three Leinster titles in the course of that. This is Cork's first appearance in Croke Park since yeah, 92. You couldn't have two teams more of a contest. Off they travel up this morning, uh, they'll have a cup of tea in the sand or somewhere. They're, they're coming to the stadium about half two and they're laid back as such. Now, Mickey O'Connor's got a lot of press all week, as Tomas says, and he's playing very well. Uh, Johnny Dooley, Johnny Pilton, the Dooley are in the midfield. But I expect if Mickey's playing very well, you see Paddy Mulher coming out to man mark Mickey O'Connor. Offaly will not play the team that have out, they have 15 out, they're going to move them around. John Ryan is in corner forward, he'll be moved around as well to use his physical strength, so will Joyerty. And like, after the radio coming in, they are all Ireland champions, and no one is kind of giving them real credit for it at all. And like, they're kind of saying to themselves, listen, you know, let's let's beat the Munster champions and show them how we stand as such. And like, no better people, they're coming in a lovely position, you know, compared to Cork. Cork are all the height, and as Samal said, like, the supporters won't hear the feet. Now that can be terrible pressure on any young team coming to Croke Park. Well, it can, they're all going to have to deal with that pressure over the next 70 minutes or so, the parade, part of the tradition of Croke Park, is well underway as they pass under us here on the Nelly Stand as we join Joe Canning in the main commentary box. Well, the uh, parade once again in a clockwise fashion. We saw that also last weekend, and I can only assume it is because there aren't any people sitting in the canal end, so it makes an awful lot more sense to follow the band and go around over there by the Nally stand and then down to Hill 16, which is jam-packed this afternoon, mostly with Cork fans, I have to say. And I would think, just looking around the ground, maybe about 30,000 people, 30-odd 30 thousand people, I suppose, here, this afternoon to see this first Guinness semi-final and I would imagine Cork outnumber Offaly in terms of support by about three to one or four to one certainly a big big following in fact many of the fans say that they had major difficulties fans of Offaly and fans of Cork just getting to the ground today especially on the uh, road up beyond Monaster Evan and towards Kildare Town big big tailbacks I believe well, it's many a long season since Cork and Offaly met in centenary year down in Thurles. And that, of course, the only other senior championship outing involving these two great forces. Joe Dooley, as we heard earlier, the only playing link. But Cork have on the sideline today men who performed with distinction. Some of them just there in front of you, Tom Cashman, Johnny Crowley as well. And, of course, uh, also in there, you've got uh, Sean O'Leary from uh, Yall originally. And, of course, Jimmy Barry Murphy himself, along with Fred Sheehy, who is from Kilworth in County Cork. So this Cork side, led by Mark Landers, continuing the parade here. 
Croke Park, a tighter pitch than Semple Stadium in Thurles, which would be seen, I think, by most people as Cork's favourite ground, whereas today's venue, where Offaly play, is uh, probably one of their home matches. It's very much a home venue, it seems, for Offaly. But then there is also the factor of the wind and the rain this afternoon, and I think that is probably going to favour the heavier, sturdier Offaly men. But uh, let's see how it all develops. And a reminder once again of the uh, line out of the teams for the afternoon. And in that full back line there, Dermot O'Sullivan fronting Donald Og Cusack, Mark Landers, and Mickey O'Connell in midfield. And then the full forward line, plenty of youth there Ben O'Connor, Neil Rowland, just 19 years of age, and Joe Dean. Well, he's no oldie, is he? It's just about 23. And now the two teams facing the uh, tricolour. Fluttering in the breeze, Argus Aromabia. It's a wonderful splash of colour even on a damp afternoon at Croke Park as we now take another check on the Offaly team for the day. Stephen Byrne, their goalkeeper, fronted by a very strong team of defenders, happily including Hubert Rigby and Kevin Martin, injured in the uh, quarter-final game. And then up front, some changes, even from that list that we're giving you there. I've noticed that John, that Jim, uh, Jim, John Troy rather, has gone to top of the right. And Joe Dean and Neil Ronan have also switched. No switch with the referee, however. It's uh, Dickie Murphy who gets the match underway. It's Cork who won the toss and up to play from right to left in the first half, which means they're playing into the breeze as John Troy knocks that one ahead. Donald Cusack having to come quickly from his goal to get there ahead of Joe Erity. The battle at midfield there, Johnny Pilkington. Mark Landers playing that one back to his centre-half back, the marvellous Brian Corcoran. Up into the corner, this one comes towards Ben O'Connor. He's been tightly marked by Simon Whelan. Wonderful sense of anticipation about Croke Park. That's Mickey O'Connell, who's been an absolute revelation in the championship so far this season. Limerick born, his third championship match today. For Brian Whelan, this is his 32nd. It's a huge one. Down inside there towards Joe Dooley. Winning the race here, however, is John Brown. Getting it away there from John Troy. That's broken down. Centre-half forward there is Fergal McCormick for Cork. Good work there by Martin Hanami. He's been given some work, wonderful service for up to Offaly over the years. Up towards John Ryan, strongly built lad. Got the first of the goals against Antrim. It's nicely caught under pressure here by Hubert Rigney. And it really is wonderful to see Hubert back in the Offaly shirt once again. So many people really feared a bad injury. This is another man who's come back, Joe Dooley. Trying to play it into space. The intention was to link up with John Troy. John Brown got there first. Now Troy, wonderfully gifted hurler. Very skillful. Taking it away from Wayne Sherlock, man of the match in the Monster Hurling final. Michael Dignan now. Stopped initially, back to Troy, looking to plant this one inside, but that ball has gone wide. It's the first wide of the match. Jimmy Barry Murphy here, he's put his faith in the young players. Ted Owens alongside him there, who looks after the physical preparations of the court team. John Troy then has gone into full forward, switching around again, even with Joe Erity as we speak. Johnny Pilkington trying to break it down, the shoulder coming in from Neil Ronan, from Ballyhay. Dignan, 
Whipped on first time there by Fergal Ryan. Didn't get it too far away. Mickey O'Connell. Awfully trying to bring a little bit of order there to the midfield. And it's Brian Porter and it comes away with it here. He's made plenty of headway. Fancy a chance himself, but that was blocked down well by the uh, number five, Brian Wheelahan. Once again, it's Johnny Pilkington. Good delivery into the inside forward line. Two players from Cork for the one ball. Finally, they get that ball away. Jim O'Sullivan, the fullback, doing well. Down towards Ben O'Connor. Scored a marvellous point against Clare. This is out to Johnny Dooley. And Johnny having a right go at this one. And it's a huge one inside his own 65 metre line. Johnny Dooley. Really bringing the Offaly fans to their feet here. And this is the reason why, as the ball was knocked to uh, Johnny, there was the 65-meter line, his own, so he's a huge distance out. Well, about 85 meters out from Donald Okuzak's goal. So Offaly take the lead. Well, that was certainly a point worth coming to see. Hubert Rigney contesting there with Fergal McCormack. Back again from Johnny Pilkington. Stopped, however, by Fergal Ryan. Getting it towards Johnny McGrath, who's playing top of the right there. Timmy McCarthy's alongside him with the white helmet. Challenged by Kevin Martin, another man who's made a wonderful recovery. And in the end, Martin Hanami getting that ball away. Up towards Joe Dooley. Once again, Brian Corcoran and uh, upended there. Challenged and fouled by Michael Dignan. It'll be a free to court. Brian Corcoran, wonderful hurler come footballer, the only member of this court team to have played senior championship here in Croke Park before. 1992 the year. It's a good free against the breeze. Rising up with Fergal McCormack. Cross towards Mickey O'Connell, trying to get the kind of start he enjoyed in the last two matches. Kevin Martin bringing the Offaly fans to life once again with that wonderful clearance stopped there by Dermot O'Sullivan getting rave reviews this year but John Troy is in to try and deny him here's Joe Errity linking up well with John Ryan Offaly look for another score and that is a beauty John Ryan from Shannon Bridge and Offaly have made the better start in the damp conditions very good individual work here by Ryan, his first point of the day. Well, the Offaly fans will be very pleased with the start their side has made. So it's two points to no score in favour of Offaly. That's hit on there by Neil Ronan, backed by Kevin Martin. Sean O'Gohalpin. Great competitor. This is contained very well down there by Ben O'Connor. O'Connor with a tight angle here, looking for Cork's first score, and uh, just not getting the range, however. Shorty McGrath trying to keep that ball in play. Pursued by Martin Hanami. And in the end, it's... Uh, well, the umpire was saying it's gone wide, but I think Dickie Murphy has other ideas. And it's going to be a 65. Dickie noted he was uh, much closer to the action than the umpire and he saw it go off uh, Martin Hanami's stick, I think it was. So, Mickey O'Connell stepping up to take this one. Very much uh, a Middletonian, of course, although I mentioned earlier, Limerick born. Eight points in his first match and a man of the match against Waterford. And five points in the uh, second, which of course was against Clare. Dropping this one in well towards Ben O'Connor. Spills away off him. Fergal McCormack turning nicely and he's put it over the bar. Cork's first point comes after seven minutes. And it's Fergal McCormack from Mallow. And good strong work here by McCormack. This nephew of Mick O'Connell, the famous Kerry footballer. So two points to one. This has stopped well here, once again, Brian Corcoran. A great first half in the Buster final. Flagged a bit in the very strong heat that afternoon during the second half, but finished very well. 
Neil Rowland beaten for that one. Comes out towards Johnny Pilkington. Kevin Martin trying to prod that ball away. And two players down injured. Free to Cork. Mickey O'Connell feeling his hand there. And he felt the sting of that. This is what happened uh, just in the build-up as O'Connell was trying to go through and uh, make contact with the legs of Hubert Rigney. Free to Joe Dean there. Some 40 metres out and a chance to level the match. Cork with the last two scores and Jimmy Barry a little bit more relieved as Joe Dean gets off the mark. One free taken, one point scored and it's two points apiece. Michael Dignan leaving this one to John Ryan, the powerfully built man who to hoped to limit the effectiveness of uh, Brian Corcoran at centre-half back. That's wonderfully taken by Jim O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan from Cloyne, home of Christy Ring. He's fouled. Free out to Cork. Michael Bond, who's done really well to come in in the last 12 months and transform Offaly's fortunes. The All-Ireland Champions against the Munster Champions. And that's too near the sideline. Sean O'Leary there. One of the stars when these counties met in 1984 down in Thurlis. It'll be Martin Hanami to strike this one. Hanami's 39th championship match. Joe Dooley, that's flicked away by John Ryan. Across here towards Paddy Mulher. And that is dropping in and over the bar. That's a fine point by Paddy Mulher of St. Rhinos in Offaly. And Offaly lead once again by three points to two. This was wonderful work by Paddy Mulher. That's the score as we go across to the far sideline. And a reporter over there this afternoon is Marty Morrissey. Just to uh, highlight the fact that uh, Offaly have changed wings in terms of their half-back line. Brian Whelan is now playing left half-back, Kevin Martin on the right. And interestingly enough to uh, see Jimmy Barry Murphy go in to speak to Dimit O'Sullivan to cool matters down after that last pass with John Troy. Here's Timmy McCarthy and that swings away. Timmy is one of those young players who's come through in the last uh, six to nine months from the under-21 ranks. Looks to get the ball on the stick and run at defenders. Here's Stephen Byrne. Offaly will be hoping that he has his confidence back once again after the uh, Leinster final in particular. Wasn't too troubled against Antrim. Here's Johnny Dooley. And Donal Oog comes away with the ball. Young Donal Oog Cusack. In over the head of Hubert Rigby. Batted down there. McCormack once again, he's a menacing figure. Good ball outside. O'Connell coming forward. Here's Timmy McCarthy. Awkward angle for McCarthy, and he's just put it to the left. It's the second wide of the match. Hit a couple of wides of the Munster final as well, Timmy. That's Sean Hayes there. He's a member of the Nemo Rangers club down in Cork. And a good puck out once again, landing around 45 metres out from the Cork goal. That's Wayne Sherlock fumbling somewhat, but not Brian Corcoran. Beyond Shawnee McGrath. Again, it's Joe Dean here, such a good player. Major influence as ever for Cork. Beating Simon Wheelahan and putting it over the bar. A second point for Joe Dean. Well, this was a really fine score going way out near to the sideline. And didn't look too much of an angle. Awfully trying to win their own puck outs here with uh, Michael Dignan going right through the heart of the court defence. That's a great response to Dean's point just moments ago. Michael Dignan's first of the day. So they go point for point here. And it's four points to three. This was uh, Dygan coming, storming through, going by Brian Corcoran, and a fine finish. Once again, it's down towards Fergal McCormack. Cody Mulher back to help out. 
And that's a pretty wild blow there by Mickey O'Connell. Referee just noting his number and calling him aside to have a little word as well. Michael Bond watching as Mickey O'Connell has gone back to pick up Johnny Pilkington and Brian Whelan, the awfully captain, about to take the free. Brian from Burr. That looks just a little bit to the right. Second wide for Offaly, that's the same tally as uh, Cork have had. Just a shake of the head there by Brian Whelan. Man he's marking this afternoon is Ben O'Connor. Donalo Cusack's puck out. Mickey O'Connell contesting with Johnny Pilkington. Johnny Dooley instead, up towards his elder brother Joe. Sticking tightly to him, however, is Fergal Ryan. Ryan doing well. Part of the uh, Black Rock contingent, of course, in the Cork back line. You've got Fergal Ryan, John Brown and Wayne Sherlock. So they wait inside while Johnny Pilkington lines up this sideline ball. Still a very misty afternoon here at Croke Park as that is won by Wayne Sherlock towards Johnny McGrath, looking for a big performance this afternoon, racing past Martin Hanneby. Lobbing it in and lobbing it over the bar. Well, that'll do his own confidence a great deal of good, acknowledging the fine ball, but he showed wonderful pace, and he ties it up at four points apiece. Well, indications early on here that he's uh, got the pace to beat Martin Hanneby, given decent supply of ball, but it was that lovely little shot at the end. And while we were watching that, it's uh, Joe Dooley who gets another for Offaly, his first this afternoon. Joe from Sir Kieran's in Clarine, making it now five points to four. It's such a fast game. Fergal McCormack broken down, comes off the stick of Timmy McCarthy, back to McCormack once again, going by Hubert Rigney, could hardly get his very best, having missed some of training, but there's too many steps taken by McCormack. Dickie Murphy rotating his hands there, and to McCormack having some words for the referee. Greeted with a bright smile, but no change of decision, an awfully free out. Brian Wheelahan summing up the options. Alongside Hubert Rigby. Dropping it in dangerously. Troy is there, batted out by O'Sullivan. Potted away there once more by Fergal Ryan out as far as Shamar or High Beam. Leaving his man behind him. Down towards Shawnee McGrath. Hanamese getting the stick to it. McGrath fights back. Challenged by Brian Wheelahan. Inside towards Fergal McCormack. Doing well, but it's a very tight situation. And Cork get themselves a free. Mickey O'Connell. A judge to have been fouled, and uh, Johnny Dooley there. Not uh, looking like he's in full agreement with the referee's verdict. So Dickie Murphy gives the free, and uh, Cork bring out their corner forward, Joe Dean. Two points so far for Dean. Playing in his fourth championship season. Takes plenty of time over it. Rarely wastes an opportunity. And he's leveled the game once again. Three points now. That's uh, Cork's best-known fan, I suppose, Cyril Kavanagh there with the Mexican gear. Saluting Dean's point, and it's five apiece. A very good contest. Johnny Dooley, what a response. That's a brilliant score. Johnny Dooley got the first score of the match. Now he's got a second, and off lead by six points to five. And the match is everything people had been predicting. Close, competitive, highly skillful. Nothing between the teams, really. Certainly the fans here are enjoying every second of it. Nearly 17 minutes gone. Timmy McCarthy trying to get that ball away from Kevin Martin. Mark Landers is going backwards to get in the challenge, but the trip is on Johnny Dooley. Landers is Cork's captain. He'd have been greatly disappointed to have been taken off the last day, but happy in the end to have lifted the Munster Cup. So no particular hurry for Johnny Dooley to uh, 
take this, taking the same kind of time over his freeze that Joe Dean does. Place balls so vital. And that is beautifully struck. It's a third now for Johnny Dooley. Two from play, one from a free, and he's made it seven points to five. The Offaly fans very, very happy indeed as their side defends their All-Ireland title. Neil Rhoda out around centre-half forward. Here he comes. First opportunity, and he strikes it to the right. Cork have moved Ben O'Connor back into the inside forward line, so it's Joe Dean at full forward, Johnny McGrath and Ben O'Connor, the two corner forwards. Fergal Ryan put under pressure by Joe Dooley, holding it up here for John Ryan to come through. The hand pass back, but the referee decides that there's a foul there by Ryan, and it's going to be a free out for Cork. And we've got some more news from the sidelines, so it's back to Marty. Jimmy Barry Murphy is quite incensed with Fergal McCormick there just a moment ago. He wants the ball to be dropped in in front of Dean and McGrath and to use their speed on the wings. Well, that indeed could be a major factor because there's so much pace in there, but uh, they would look in particular to McCormick's strength, I'm sure. Here's Dermot O'Sullivan. Just struggling a little bit here against John Foy. Assistance coming once again, but in the end not needed. O'Sullivan with that ball away. Here comes Wayne Sherlock. Nice ball across towards Mark Landers. Decent ball inside this time to Dean. Drop right in front of him against Kevin Keenahan. Taking the fullback out of position. And a delightfully hit shot by Joe Dean. And really it's the quality of the pass up to Dean. And Dean's trickery after that that made the score possible. But so many quality strikes in a match that's produced 13 points so far. This is where Cork managed to narrow the gap down to one. Joe Dean's fourth. At the other end, it's John Brown. You remember his uh, brother Richard, of course, full back in the core teams of the past, back around 1990. And Alan Brown is a, a brother. Alan's among the subs. Strong hitting in midfield there. Joe Rarity, not sure if he rather it's uh, Brian Wheelahan, as Hubert Ridley, Ridley left it there. Nicely across towards Joe Dooley, looking for another point. And he's got another two shots at the goal and two points for Joe Dooley. One of the great hurlers of the past 20 years. And he makes it eight points to six. He's a player with a wonderful temperament and benefited from that pass coming from Brian Wheelahan. And then got around his man and struck it sweetly over the crossbar. Urging on the other lads. 45th championship match this afternoon. Fergal McCormick playing around left half forward at this stage, that ball, hand passed inside towards Mark Landers, won back by Hubert Wigney, this is Mickey O'Connell, he'll fancy his chances from 45 metres out, but he's put it wide, he's had a few chances, and still two points between the teams, and uh, Jimmy looking quite incensed there, with some of the movement from his uh, midfielders and half-backs, I suppose, the quality of passing, now they're under pressure, and it's Michael Dijkman, John Ryan bypassed, outside towards Joe Dooley, Fergal Ryan will have to keep a very tight rein on him. Got a little stick on that. That's away by Wayne Sherlock. Timmy McCarthy trying to get to this one. Leaving it for Shorty McGrath instead. High challenge on McGrath. The Glen Rovers man. Knocking it across towards Ben O'Connor. A young player. Another young player beating him to it. Simon Wheelham. Good delivery up towards Joe Rarity. Good ball inside towards Troy. It's a delightful turn. But O'Sullivan will get back goal side. Quality full-back play by Jermaine O'Sullivan. But uh, you can never rest for a moment when you're up against players of the calibre of uh, Johnny Dooley or John Troy. Back once again towards Brian Wilhelm. Dropped in towards Troy once more. What a catch this time. And he did just enough in, it, in losing his boot as well to keep it away from John Troy. Here's Joe Dooley. Troy has got it, and Troy has the space and the quality and the accuracy. John Troy has put it over, and I notice that Billy Dooley is being prepared, and indeed not just that, as we watch the replay of this once again, which Joe Dooley set up for his forward colleague, John Troy. What a quality point. Uh, we've got a change in the Offaly team, so let's go back to Marty. 
Uh, just to tell you, uh, Jared, that Billy Dooley has been introduced. The man that's coming off is Joe Everton. So it's uh, a quarter forward for a quarter forward because that's where Joe Everton had been playing. But early stages in the match to make their first substitution. This runs on here. Brian Wheeler had probably do as much covering as possible for his uh, wing colleagues this afternoon. Broken down here by Brian Corcoran. John Troy was after him, or John uh, Ryan was after him. Here's Mickey O'Connell. Johnny Pelton closing in as much as possible. Wayne Sherlock trying to get that ball away. Tight exchanges there. Kevin Martin doing well. Cork get it back. Mark Landers towards Johnny McGrath. McGrath getting out once again, this time beating Hubert Rigney. And the shot saved in the end by the goalkeeper does well Stephen Byrne linking up with Simon Wheelahan awfully fans delighted with the quality of the performance their side are putting up so far but just three points between the teams John Brown with the clearance and that's gone out over the sideline John Brown today playing in his fifth championship match well the fans here at the edge of the seat stuff most of the time Hurling of sheer delight and quality. Now the turn of the Offaly fans. They may be outnumbered here, but they're certainly raising the decibel level. This sideline to be taken by Dooley. That's Johnny Dooley. What a cut in. Brilliant. Stopped there well by Donald O'Cusack. Trying to pick out Timmy McCarthy. Beaten, beating Kevin Martin to it. Into space there. It's Joe Dean challenging. Kevin Keenan does well. Holds it up for an instant of a while. And in the end, Joe Dean has lost it. And it's away by uh, Brian Wheelahan. Johnny Dooley lobbed in there towards Joe. Tipped in. John Troy reacting quickly. Trying to get inside Brown. Good corner back play by John Brown. Very assured stuff from John Brown to take it away. And many moments of danger there. He's in front of that court goal. Now Mark Landers, the East Cork man, up towards the inside forward line. Timmy McCarthy trying to get a block in it there as uh, Simon Wheelham was trying to make the clearance. Now Hubert Rigney. Challenge chased after. And the referee, I think, going to throw the ball in between uh, two players. Well, it's something of a miracle that Hubert Rigney is back playing this quickly after that injury. As we go back to the sideline once again to Marty. Just an interesting statistic for you, uh, out of 15 points scored so far, 13 have been from play. And certainly the crowd here behind me in the new Cusick stand are really enjoying this encounter. They certainly are. This is one here by Johnny Perkington. Brian Corker coming across, really strongly built man. Lobbed in there towards Timmy McCarthy and Kevin Martin put up his hand for that one, didn't quite take the ball away. Instead, it's Fergal McCormack, challenged by Martin once again. Stepping in there is Mickey O'Connell, getting enough space to try his shot, but it's stopped here once again by goalkeeper Stephen Byrne. Good ball up towards John Ryan, who's been switched in on Brian Corcoran. On the ground is Paulie Mulher. That's Ryan there, full-blooded contest alongside John Brown. Lovely pick up by Mark Landers. Beautiful skill, now can he get the ball away? John Ryan chasing after him. The hand pass inside towards Mickey O'Connor. Back nicely again towards Ben O'Connor. Blocked there by Simon Wheelahan. John Ryan comes out to it once again. It's Wheelahan once more. Now here's Billy Dooley. And Dooley's shot is going well to the right. Like old times, all three Dooleys back in the Offaly team once again. And that's now a total of three wides by Offaly. Fergal McCormack here, Fergal from Mallow. And that eye injury needs a little attention from Dr. Con Murphy. Well, just now, about eight minutes or so to half time, and still just three points between the teams. The All Ireland champions in front. Cork trying to win their own puck out here. McCormack in there, so too Ben O'Connor. Dean's after it, so too is Kevin Keenahan. May need reinforcements. Keenan on his hands and knees. And here comes once again Simon Wheelahan. What a lovely tidy corner back he is. You could nearly pick an all-star team from just the 30 players on the field right now. 
Here comes Fergal Ryan once again. Stopped here by Johnny Dooley. Into space, Mickey O'Connell trying to take that ball away. And uh, the pull there is by Joe Dooley. And Joe has a couple of players shape up to one another, such as Fergal McCormack and Johnny Pilkington. This is what happened as Joe Dooley was contesting that one and uh, just connected with the right angle of Mickey O'Connell. Joe spoken to by the referee. And there's a yellow card for uh, Joe Dooley. First of the match. Joe would make the point that it was just uh, poor timing on his part, nothing malicious involved, but he gets a card nonetheless. And there's Alan Brown over there, as Cork considered bringing him in. He had a bit of strength and force to their full forward line, if that's what's required. Mickey O'Connell hitting this one, and once again, Stephen Byrne doing really well. Martin Hanami turning around, Joe Dean forcing him in over the end line. And I think it's gone full of 65. So that's the second 65 that Offley had been forced to uh, concede. Both of them on that left-hand side, incidentally. What a great worker he is, Martin Hanami. has been down through the years. Corkman then having their little chat, considering a possible switch or change. Meanwhile, the 65 to be taken by Nicky O'Connell. Trying to eat into Offaly's lead, and he's dropped it to the right, and he's put it wide. Five wides now by uh, Cork in this match, and uh, just about six minutes to go to half-time. Let's go back to Marty Morrissey. Certainly Cork feel they need added strength, particularly in the attack. So Alan Brown is about to be introduced, and the man that's going to be taken off is Neil Ronan. OK, Neil Ronan wearing number 14. Look for that change. It hasn't been made just yet as Mickey O'Connell comes forward. Here's Timmy McCarthy, shoulder by Hubert Rigney. McCarthy blocked down by Hubert Rigney. And Kevin Martin once again, wounded in the last game, but uh, both back, showing some wonderful form. That's missed by Paddy Mulher, runs on instead towards John Ryan. Now Billy Dooley. Billy has assistance, it's Mulher here, keeping a tight rein in him is John Brown. Brown into challenge once again, but to Billy Dooley taking it away on a solo run, but there's a foul. And it's going to be... A free as the uh, change is about to be made now. Billy Dooley fouling that ball there, free to Cork. And Alan Brown is coming in, and as we heard, it's going to be Neil Ronan who will make his way off. So Ben O'Connor has gone into the corner on Simon Wheelahan. Alan Brown has been uh, selected to play at left half forward. Cork rejigging their forces. And that is Brian Corcoran's free down towards Alan Brown. Beaten for it, however, by Brian Wheelahan. Now Johnny Dooley. Great ball. Caught brilliantly here by his brother Billy. Dermot O'Sullivan called on to defend there against John Troy. Not a great clearance. Comes out and uh, uh, Cork defence under pressure once again. Support from Fergal Ryan. A good clearance by Ryan. Stopped by Johnny Dooley. Bottled up in midfield. Alan Brown's back there. Here's Brian Wheelahan. Again onto his left-hand side, in towards John Ryan this time. That's beautifully taken from the air by Brian Corcoran. So many quality performances this afternoon by players on both teams. McGrath, the pacey corner forward against Hanami. He's done it once already. Here he comes again. Inside towards Timmy McCarthy. McCarthy needing support way back this time towards Fergal McCormack. He was pushed, the referee decides. A shake of the head by Johnny Pilkington. But from a situation where Cork looked to have a scoring chance, then looked to have it lost with a hand pass into space, suddenly they get themselves a free. So it's going to be Joe Dean to come and take this. Dean has taken two frees so far, 100% success rate, four points in all. His other scores coming, obviously, from play. So this to put two points between the teams, close to the half-time break. Joe Dean, successful once again. Happy Cork mentors and fans, county board officials in the background there as well, and Joe Dean has made it 9-7.
Mark Landers contesting there with the other number eight, and Mark Landers emerging with it. The hand pass into space towards Alan Brown. It will certainly give the Cork attack a more physical presence. Fergal McCormack challenged there by Paddy Mulhair, challenged as well by Michael Dykeman. Comes to Alan Brown once more. Nothing given lightly in this match. Nice pass outside towards Mickey O'Connell. And the ball picked off the ground, and it's uh, going to be a free. A disappointed Mickey O'Connell. Free to Offaly. And Offaly in no particular hurry to take this free. I think players all around the place playing the uh, game at such an amazing pace, they probably feel they could do a little breather. Joe Dooley waiting inside. Brian Wheeler had striking this one, about 50 metres from his own goal. Brad Corcoran drops it down. Assistance here coming in the shape of Jeremy O'Sullivan. Nice ball to Timmy McCarthy. There's support there if he needs it. Going long and st stayed down towards Shawnee McGrath. Three players converging on him. One of them is Brian Wheeler, who does well. Great skill and composure. A fine clearance up towards left half forward. John Ryan lets it spill down there. Again, he's got assistance if he needs it. Johnny Dooley, aware he could have been hooked, dropping it in well. And John Brown, a judge to have been holding Billy Dooley just on the edge of the large rectangle. Protest from the corner back, but uh, the referee has made his decision. And there wasn't a great deal of contact looking at that in reprise. But awfully get themselves a free. He's greatly disappointed, John Brown. And this should be a very simple chance for Johnny Dooley to tap it over the bar. So inside the last minute of a very, very pacey first half. The new canal end in the background, and that is put high up into the new seating. Johnny Dooley with four points now. And he's made it 10-7. All the fans here, not segregated. It's one of the great attractions, I think, of Gaelic games. People good-spirited, good-humoured, plenty of banter, and people who love their sport. Alan Brown can't take it. Instead, it is Brian Wheeler. This is Ben O'Connor trying to make some headway and uh, not allowed an advantage. The referee has blown the whistle and it's going to be a free to Cork and Joe Dean's already on his way out as Simon Wheelerham feels his head. Of course, his brother Barry is a member of the uh, substitutes this afternoon. So, it's going to be Joe Dean to take this. Referee wants... Brian Wheelerham back the requisite distance, which should be 20 metres. So in injury time, Dean strikes and Dean scores. What is his sixth point of the match? Well, he's had a 100% success rate from Freeze, and now just two points separating these teams close to the break. Sean Ogleham-Dean is beaten for this by Cody Mulhair. But there's assistance here as ever. Comes in the figure of Brian Corcoran. Held up there by John Ryan. Free to Cork. Corcoran dropping it in towards Fergal McCormack. But it spills loose once again to Brian Wheelan up towards Joe Dooley. Ryan went there first but didn't take possession, it's Dooley instead, but Ryan sticking to his task well, and Fergal Ryan emerging with it here. Great uh, rallying sight for the Cork team and fans, I'm sure. That's across the goal there by Shawnee McGrath. Alan Brown's pouncing in there, well stopped by the goalkeeper initially, and now Brian Wheeler had to try and take it away. Not too many goal chances in the first half, but there was a late one there. Good work by the keeper. Mickey O'Connell now, pouncing again. Across towards McGrath this time. Shawnee McGrath. Turning it on his left-hand side. Players wait inside. It's Alan Brown, one of them, looking for a chance to kick this ball in. Offaly standing firmly there in front of goalkeeper Stephen Byrne. And the referee 
has been uh, whistling furiously. This is what happened just moments ago there as Alan Brown got that into his hands. Simon Whelan was trying to prevent him getting that ball away. And the referee has uh, brought the play out after all of that. And he's throwing it up on the 20-metre line. Hubert Rigney against Alan Brown. And away in the end by Kevin Martin towards Joe Dooley. Back it comes once again to Mickey O'Connell and the referee sees the foul by Johnny Dooley. And Johnny once again protesting vehemently that it was a perfectly fair shoulder in his view. Dickie Murphy has a, a different view on things, however, and a free to Cork. Here's what happened. This is where Johnny was coming across and uh, I think the referee's view is that he was into the back of Mickey O'Connell. So, three minutes of injury time has been played. Joe Dean. And that's another one by Dean. Seven points. Five frees taken, five frees converted. And the Cork fans very, very happy with this uh, late rush of scores by their team because there's only one between them. And the referee whistles for half time here. It's been a wonderfully entertaining first 35 minutes and a little more. Jimmy Barry Murphy makes his way in. And at half time, Michael Bond's side just edging it. The All Ireland champions leading by just a point. And Jimmy encouraging his side there as they go in. We go down to Marty Morrissey. Sean O'Leary joins me. Your overall analysis of that first half and the performance by Cork. Yeah. Oh, we're good delighted. No, to be just a point behind at half time. Uh, the win really is a bit of a lottery. Um, you know, I think we need to contest it a bit more, possibly around the half back line. And midfield came into it over the past 10 minutes. And uh, I think we've settled a little bit, but you know, um, the game, we have a new new challenge now in the second half, playing with the win. And it's very often not as easy to, uh, you know, to run a game with, with the win that is there. So, nevertheless, we're in a good situation and just hoping that we can build on it now. The addition of Alan Brown uh, gives you the option of, of added strength as such. Yeah, well, it does. We can also use him in the full line. So, we just hope now we'll get something from him for the second 35. Sean O'Leary, best of luck. Thank you for joining us. Now the, half the half-time score here is awfully 10 points. Cork, 9. And it's a great score. And... Uh, Offley, every time Cork got a score in the first half, Offley seemed to go down the field at will and were able to pick off their points. And uh, I think they'll be happy enough with their first half performance as well, even though there is a strong breeze. And you'll be happy enough with the way this man is playing? Yes, I mean, if we get more ball into Jordan, I think he'll make it difficult for his opponents. And that's an excellent score off his left hand. He seems to have, have it over jo uh, Kevin Keenan when he goes off the ball and gets possession. And here we see an excellent point. Well, pretty much all of the big players, Cyril, on both sides are delivering so far. Again, Sean McGrath, the Cork forwards, will be the other man apart from Joe Dean to be looking to. Yeah, he's, he's scored a couple of He's a very tricky customer, lovely ball. When the ball goes into the Cork need the ball out and put him here, he's, get, he's getting on hand of me, shows great pace, like, and hits it on the run, has to look up, and it's a fantastic score, like, off the hole, doesn't catch it again. Now, he's very dangerous, but there isn't that much ball going in. Here you can see the skill. He doesn't actually catch the second, and he hits it off the stick here. Now, watch just here. If he comes against the free out, fantastic score. But they need more ball out in front of them. I said Jim Barry Murphy sent to the half back line midfield. You have to get on top. If they don't get on top out there, they're not going to win the game. But if they do get on top, they will win it. And if you, as you've made the point a couple of times during the first half, Tomas, every time Cork is a good score like that, often he come back straight away. Yeah, from the result in Puck out there on a few occasions, we got on top and got the point. The next thing the ball was put down the field and Offley scored. So I mean I think Jimmy will be disappointed at that. This is a result from a puck out, out to Johnny Dooley and no better man in a position like that, Johnny Dooley put the ball over the bar off his left hand side. That's a worrying factor from Park. When they seem to get the initiative and go on top, off they came back down the field and scored very, very easily. Okay, gentlemen, we must take another commercial break before we go back to the second half of this intriguing match. Offley have played particularly well in, this, in, in, the, in the first half, and they're not going to give up their title very easily. Sir Farrell, no matter what happens in this game, no matter what the outcome is, Offley certainly have played very well in this. Michael. Awfully always play well as far as I'm concerned, and I seem the only one that's ever saying it. Like, they're a very good team, they're all Ireland champions, okay, they didn't win the Insta title, but they're going to be very happy for us. 
they have to take the game. They have to win the throw-in. They have to take the game now to Cork. It's up to Cork now to get on top. Jim Barry will be worried about Sherlock and the two midfielders, Landers and Mickey Connor, to get more of them. But like Johnny Dooley, Johnny, Johnny Pilgrim are picking up a lot of ball and hitting it up, and the Opley Falls are still very dangerous. Uh, Cork now is a fairly good breeze. Opley are a pint up. It's all to play for 35 minutes, and it's anyone's game as such. There's a place in the All Ireland final at stake this September. Who's it going to be? Your guess is as good as mine. Let's go back again to Joy Canning. Yes, just a point between the teams at half time, 10 points to 9. And the match being played in front of an attendance of 37,629. It's a very, very good attendance. Dickie Murphy about to set in motion the second 35 minutes. And as Sir Farrell mentioned, the breeze now behind Cork for the second half. That's Fergal McCormick, bad ball towards Johnny Pilkington to John Ryan. Inside towards John Troy. Diamond O'Sullivan gets there first, however. Here's Michael Dagnan. Hitting it from some distance out, and it's gone to the left. Well, he is really a very strongly built man. And a fierce competitor as well. Something which Jimmy Barry Murphy would be well aware of. Donald O'Cusack to strike this puck out. Going left towards Alan Brown's corner. Knocked back that time. Once again, it's Simon Wheeler. Johnny Pilkington using ground hurling this time. Missed by Paulie Mulhair. John Ryan trying to get that ball ahead. Hubert Rigney. This is Mickey O'Connell linking up with Sean O'Gohalpine. Dropping it in, of course, Joe Dean. Kevin Keenahan. Good work by the fullback almost hockey style getting that ball away as uh, Johnny Pilkington has gone down with an injury Alan Brown on the ground as well and all of that after Kevin Keane had been nursing that ball away as far as possible from his own goal area and uh, that is where the stick of Alan Brown collided accidentally with Johnny Pilkington thankfully Johnny's okay it oh, looks a bit dazed to me. Dr. Brendan Lee, the team doctor, will come out and attend to him just to make absolutely sure. Michael Bond showing his concern. Cork attacking. This is Ben O'Connor playing it back towards Mickey O'Connell. Cork trying to gain mastery at midfield, and that's O'Connell with his first point of the match. He levels it up. They level for the third time, and it's ten points apiece. So delighted Cork fans now. And this was set up by Ben O'Connor, who took the tourist trail there, back towards Mickey O'Connell, and a very fine shot in the mist. Once again, it's Cork defending on their own half-back line. John Brown coming out to help. Brian Corcoran. Great work, leaving two Offaly players on the ground in his wake towards Sonny McGrath. He certainly has the pace in the beating of Martin Hanemi if he gets decent ball and he's put Cork in front. Sonny McGrath second. In over the head that time of Timmy McCarthy and Martin Hanemi was wrong-footed and again it was McGrath and a very fine finish. Well, given possession, he can certainly make things happen. And I noticed that Offaly have changed the marking alignment and Simon Whelan has gone across on McGrath. Now the pressure back of the Offaly half-backs. McGrath this time against Whelan. That's Keenan. Nicely taken up under his stick here by Ben O'Connor. And O'Connor playing beautifully now has put it over the bar. His first point and he makes it 12-10. Some transformation. Remember, it was 9 6 in Offaly's favour approaching half time. But Offaly are doughty fighters and they will battle right to the end of this game. But now they want to get some scores at the start of this half just to settle things down a little bit. Mulhair into space. Mark Landers going back. Cut brilliantly there by Brian Wheelham. Nice little ball inside for Johnny Dooley. Got just enough space. Down into the corner here. This is Billy Dooley, first half substitute. Lobbed in there and cut by Sean Ogo. Halpine. Aware that he was probably going to be hooked. Dignan's after him. Mulhair's after him. They're all after him. 
It's back there with Pilkington. The hand pass to Kevin Martin. Kevin Martin with a long, long effort here, but the umpire has signalled that it's just gone to the right. Well, deafening noise now here being made by the Cork fans. Podge Mulhair there on the left-hand side hoping to try and turn about Offaly's fortunes. They want to hold on to that title. A selector with Pat McLaughlin and Michael Bond. Donald O'Cusack's puck out is a huge one. Wind assisted. Down to Alan Brown. And Brown shoots and puts it over the bar. Very good work by Alan Brown, playing today in his eighth championship match. Well, it's quite a turnabout here at the start of the second half. Four unanswered points by Cork and Offaly yet to get their first score. First shot even in on the target. This is Brian Corcoran once again anchoring that half-back line. McGrath wanted a really big performance here, having been disappointed in the last two championship matches. This is Ben O'Connor, Alan Brown almost getting in his way. Simon Wheelahan is dragged back and it's a free to Offaly. Well, it's interesting that they had to bring Simon Whelan across onto McGrath here just to try and negate his influence as the selectors have a little meeting over there and wonder about possible other options. And they would uh, include Gary Hannafrey as well as a big tall lad can play on the half-forward line. John Brown leaving it there for Dermot O'Sullivan. Troy goes in, Mulher goes in, and finally out by Brian Corcoran once again to Wayne Sherlock. It's a really impressive performance by Cork in these opening minutes of the second half. Wheeler knocking it back down towards John Ryan. Once again stopped there by Corcoran. And O'Halpin coming in to help. David O'Sullivan. Tremendous work by O'Sullivan. A huge one down towards Sean McGrath. Getting there ahead of Wheeler. And this time it drops into the arms of Stephen Byrne. Byrne's clearance down towards Michael Dignan. Oh, how trying to keep it away from him. John Ryan is stopped over here by uh, John Brown. Billy Dooley chasing after him. The shoulder by Ryan, the clearance by Brown. Up towards O'Connor. Ben O'Connor trying to turn Martin Hanami. Hurley's flying, Hanami's lost his. He tried to wrestle back the forward. And Ben O'Connor wins the free for Cork. And Martin Hanami has had a very frustrating afternoon. That last little action there, I think, just about summed up the day for him so far. And this man's pace and finishing has been one of the big, big uh, features of the match. We'll have some news from the sideline in just a moment, but first a free to Joe Dean. Seven points in the match so far. This within his range, but he's put it well to the right. And that's Cork's first wide of the second half, their sixth in all. Let's go across to Marty Morrissey. Certainly off the field, they need to give fresh impetus to their attack, which seems, that in the second half at least, to be devoid of ideas. So Gary Hanafy is coming on, and John Ryan is the man that's going to be taken off. OK, so Martin... So that's the number 18, Gary Hanafy, as I mentioned earlier, was likely to be an option. And so the man who's gone off is John Ryan. Ryan who got one point so far in the game. One and only point of this semi-final. Offley then tried to freshen up matters in their forward line, but once again denied possession. And that was Wayne Sherlock's strength carrying that ball forward. Here's Wheelahan, that's Simon Wheelahan. The hand pass to Poddy Mulhair. Stopped by Brian Corcoran, wonderful positional set, but it's dropped there by Troy. That's great play. Only John Troy could possibly do that. A second point for John Troy. And Offaly's first score of the second half comes after seven minutes, and it's 13-11. That was the steal of the day. Just as Brian Corker was about to hit that ball away. Wonderful skill, a real pickpocket there, John Troy. Hanami gets that ball down, tries to make the clearance. And this is away by Brian Wheelan once again. Great run by Brian Wheelan. Timmy McCarthy chasing after him. Wheelan encouraged by the Offaly crowd, and he hits it. Saved in there by Donald O'Cusack. Towards Shawnee McGrath. Went off his helmet that time. He backhanded it. 
Well, have you seen that in Hurley? Here's Jodin, and it's gone wide. Well, so many talking points, even in just the second half so far. Well, certainly the bench there, including Joe Errity on the left-hand side, not a particularly happy place to be. Only two between them. Oh, Halpine getting assistance there from Mark Landers. Alan Brown battling, but it's won back by Johnny Potent and happily recovered from the injury that knocked in the head a little while ago. It's a free to Offaly. And the man who's going to take the free will be Johnny Dooley. Score the first point of the match. He's hit two frees so far, converted both. On a pretty wretched afternoon weather-wise. Looking for another awfully score in the second half, and he's put it wide. So still a two-point gap between the teams. I notice that Paulie Mulher has gone to midfield now alongside Johnny Dooley, Michael Dignan right half forward, and Johnny Pilkington has been moved by the uh, Offaly selectors there onto the 40. And that is to try and limit the effectiveness of Brian Corcoran, who's been storming into this match. Beyond Fergal McCormack, and this is won back beautifully here by Simon Wheelahan. Dean chases. This is Pilkington now on the 40. Missed his stroke the first time, and I think that was by the presence of Mark Landers. That's a big one, that's a huge one, that's a wonderful score. Johnny Pilkington's first, and now the gap down to just one. Two teams serving up another marvellous hurling match. Pilkington, the ever-dependable. Great score, great match. Towards Alan Brown this time. Brown trying to get that ball inside Hubert Rigney. Rigney's still trying to play as steady as possible for a man who's been out of training for the last two weeks. I was down at the dressing room Mary when he was being taken off the hospital and there was an oxygen mask down over his face and quite honestly, it looked the worst at that stage but thankfully, in his case and in Kevin Martin's, it wasn't as bad as first seemed. Awfully called on to defend, that was away by Martin. Alan Brown showing his football skills, or Halpine showing his vision to pick out the strong man in the middle there, Brian Corcoran. Clinton to chase his after him without the stick. Inside towards Jodine, quick off the blocks against Kevin Keenahan. The hand pass, laying it off there towards the number 13, Ben O'Connor. Loved inside of us, nobody ready for it. And in the end, it's Brian Wheelahan. Always the man to help out in a crisis. It's anybody's match. Little to choose between two wonderful teams. Body Mulher. Gary Hannafy's in support if he needs him. Good chasing back by Mickey O'Connell. The shoulder by Hannafy. Back at his feet again. The crowd absolutely loving this. Wonderful skill. Wonderful commitment. It's what summer sport is all about. Jim and O'Sullivan coming up to hit this ball for Cork. Good cut, beyond Timmy McCarthy, and Kevin Martin again, Martin's doing well against Timmy McCarthy, has been doing so throughout this match, or oh, Halpine away towards Wayne Sherlock, lobbed up towards Ben O'Connor, getting the stick to it ahead of Martin Hanami, Stephen Byrne, that's a fine clearance towards the wings, Johnny Dooley got the hand to it, here comes Michael Dignan, head down, chasing after him is Sean Ogo Halpine. Into space towards John Troy, away once again by Brian Corcoran. What a performance by the Cork number six. And that's going to be a free for the foul there by Timmy McCarthy. Sean McGraw was playing away at one end. But uh, the free is to Offaly. Jimmy Barry Murphy making a point to Alan Brown. And I think he may be switching him in onto Hubert Rigney. Rigney's gone across towards the wing, still following Fergal McCormack, as Brian Wheelahan, the awfully captain, prepares to take this free. Drop down towards Joe Dooley. Fergal Ryan races after him, Dooley wriggling this way and that, needing assistance. Back to Paddy Mulher, good block down that time by Mickey O'Connell. 
Back towards Dooley once again. Now Timmy McCarthy trying to get some space to get it up onto the stick. Instead, it's Johnny Pilkington. He got a beauty earlier on. That's a good ball inside. It's away by John Brown. Out to the corner. Mark Landers keeping the ball in play. And driven inside. Hanami coming across. Let's it slip down this time. Joe Dean fumbles, falls. And in the end, it's back with Brian Wheelan once again. Gaps appearing now. Players tiring noticeably. Johnny Dooley lobbing it down towards Joe. That's Fergal Ryan there trying to keep it away from the attentions of substitute Gary Hannafy. Inside towards another sub. Billy Dooley, and that's over the bar on the sides. I level. The team's level for the fourth time now in an absolutely wonderful game. Billy Dooley's first, making it 13 points each. Gary Hannafy played it inside, and that was enough for Dooley just to get the stick at it. And it's gone over the bar, and they level again. And let's go back to Marty. Just one other change in the Cork side. Kevin Murray is being introduced to the attack, and the man that's coming off is Timmy McCarthy. Well, Timmy McCarthy, the one then who goes, and it's the uh, new man in there, Kevin Murray, and Murray's got into top of the right. So confirmation of the change is being made as Kevin Martin goes down bravely and gets a belt to the face there as uh, Fergal McCormick was sliding in after him. Meanwhile, it's out by Brian Wheelahan in towards Troy. They're waiting inside for it. It's Billy Dooley once again on towards John Troy. Awkward angle, and it's beautifully over the bar by Troy. A third point for this man, who is among the most skilled to play this game over the last 10 years. Wonderful wrist work. No angle too tight for him, and it's 14 points to 13. Billy Dooley fed it outside for Troy, and that's a smashing score. Meanwhile, attention required to Kevin Martin. He went down, he was sliding towards the ball, bravely trying to take that ball away, and the indication from Simon Wheelan is that he's got an injured chin. Tom Cashman there on the left-hand side. And Jimmy Barry Murphy players who performed with distinction against Offley. But that's that rain pouring down incessantly as it has done so since about 12 o'clock today. This is where Martin went down. He slided. He caught the leg of Fergie McCormack in the face. And so second match in a row that he has required attention. This time it's a, a facial wound. Dr. Brendan Lee, long-serving medical officer, attending to uh, Kevin. Martin today playing in his 26th championship match and the selectors indicating that they may have to possibly make a change let's hope he can continue he's been playing well but what about that scoreline and what a match it is there were those who suggested there might be so little between them at the end of 70 minutes we could be back for a replay Plenty of time to go yet, midway through the second half. This is taken and dropped in here nicely, but to the right, Kevin Murray was protesting. A player who came in and scored two goals against Limerick on his championship debut in the second half of that game back in 1994, I seem to remember, down in Limerick. Stephen Byrne with the puck out. Missed by Johnny Pilkington, Mickey O'Connell, stopped by Hubert Rigney, Shawnee McGrath, Hubert Rigney showing good balance and control, picking out Pilkington, the two-man inside forward line, led by Joe Dooley. Back once again is Dermot O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan getting that ball away into the inside forward line towards Kevin Murray, in beyond him. Brian Whelan having time to get that ball up and strike a very fine clearance when Sherlock having trouble there against the height of Gary Hannafy heavy pulling down there Mickey O'Connell trying to set it up for Brian Corcoran but instead it's Johnny Pilkington and again Brian Corcoran he is giving some display this afternoon this is Shawnee McGrath inside towards Ben O'Connor this time Martin Hannafy getting out first time missing his stroke however persistence there in the part of Callum Brown and Kevin Murray and in here is Ben O'Connor 
Offley defending valiantly, but the referee's whistle sounds. And it's going to be a free into court and a chance for them to go back in front again. And the welcoming committee are out to have a word with referee Dickie Murphy. And certainly they are uh, vehemently questioning his decision here. But it seems pointless because the referee has uh, made the call. It was Ben O'Connor going through that time. Now, see if you can spot the foul. Yes, it was the contact with Hubert Rigney's leg, I think, but uh, not too sure it was intentional. Five out of six for Joe Dean this afternoon. So, a guilt edge chance for Cork here. And for Joe Dean to get his eighth point. Some very good striking by Dean. This is the scoreline, Cork back in front by 14 points to 13. Knocked out by O'Halpin, beyond Shorty McGrath. And this time for a push by Mickey O'Connell, it's going to be a free to Offaly. And uh, Brian Whelan this time being entrusted with the uh, puck. Will he fancy his chances against the breeze of putting this over the bar? He's going for it to try and make them level once again. He's got it. Brian Whelan, the captain, has made it 14 points apiece. And they are level now for the fifth time. It comes back to Kevin Martin at left half back. Martin Hanami back out towards Hubert Rigney. All great stars in the past and starring here again this afternoon alongside Simon Wheelahan. Brian Corcoran, this time beaten for it by John Troy. Impishly taking it inside towards Pilkington, expecting the shoulder to come from Gearman O'Sullivan. And here's a chance and it's gone over the bar. Once again, Johnny Pilkington on hand to turn the chance into a score. And once again, Offaly show that they're so difficult to beat. The champions lead by 15 points to 14. But that time it was the influence of Troy again. The one man who seems to be able to trouble Brian Corcoran. Well, the Offaly fans, the Cork fans, I think everybody just enthralled by this gripping contest. But still plenty of time to go. That time it's left to Brian Wheeler had to try and get that ball away to midfield, stopped by Wayne Sherlock. The match ebbing and flowing, first Cork going a couple of points up, then Offaly coming back, showing the kind of spirit that we know they possess and have done right down through the years. Dougal McCormack waiting as Brian Wheeler had comes up to line up this uh, latest free. Now, this is a bit further out than the one he dropped over the bar a little while ago. So he opts to put that ball in towards Gary Hanafy, and they all race in around the goal area, but it's Fergal Ryan who gets it away for Cork. Out as far as Shaw or Halpy. Towards Jodine, great catch! Lovely skill by Dean, a smaller man beating the taller full back to that ball. Back it comes out again towards Alan Brown. And blocked down by Brian Wheelahan. Martin Hanaby trying to get the ball away. Intense pressure on backs on both teams. Wheelahan away towards Paddy Mulher. Tremendous contest down towards Troy against Dermot O'Sullivan. Backed up and supported by the man of the wing, Wayne Sherlock. Here's Alan Brown expecting the challenge to come in from Hanaby into the back, and it's going to be a free to call. Disappointed, Martin Hanaby makes his way back. And Cork once again bring out the man with the gold helmet and the golden touch. Brian Whelan looking disappointed with the decision. But still about 12 minutes to play. Michael Bond has his team really well prepared, but watching as Jody lobs it in. And that was Kevin Murray trying to perform his party piece, but he was inside the small rectangle, and it's a free out to Offaly. Interesting decision on the part of Joe Dean, if indeed he was trying to lob it in for a surprise goal, because there was a point for the taking. Offaly lead.
Gary Hannity. Once again, it's Brian Corcoran. Jermaine O'Sullivan was backing him up, but the ball went off the stick there of the very alert John Troy. His little flicks, his touches, his ability to steal the ball away, all part of a wonderful repertoire. Well, we've seen Jermaine O'Sullivan take a couple of sideline cuts for Jimmy Barry Murphy's team this afternoon. And this is another good one towards Fergal McCormick. Runs on towards Shawnee McGrath. Taken by Simon Wheelahan. What a contribution by the Wheelahans in this match. Johnny Dooley against John, John, John Troy against Gilbert O'Sullivan. Troy wins it once again. Stepping away from trouble here is Michael Dignan, the referee, not allowing an, an advantage. The ball ended up in the arms of Donald O'Cusack, but it's going to be a free to Offaly. Ted Owens and Jimmy Barry Murphy hatching plans. But it's anybody's game. Offaly with a chance now to go two points up. So the free taker as ever is Johnny Dooley. And Johnny has taken three frees so far in the game. He's made two of them. The last one he took was the one he missed. So Johnny Dooley striking this one, putting it high, accurately so, and over the bar. Offaly lead by two points. Five points for Johnny Dooley, and it's 16 points to 14. And Michal Martin, the Education Minister, there in the background. And, uh, of course, the Health Minister there from Offaly, just in front, Brad Cowan. Colleagues in uh, the world of politics, but this afternoon, I think, just enjoying the match, but just supporting different teams as that ball is lobbed in. Hanami takes it down, he's playing better now. Tries to get that ball away. Stymie, Kevin Murray's there. Simon Wheelan's around. Kevin Murray just not keeping that ball in play. How does he do so? It's gone wide. They play away, but the ball has actually gone wide. So Cork 14 points, Offaly 16 points, and that scoreline confirmed by the score here in the stadium in uh, two areas of the ground. So Offaly have their lead, but only about nine minutes remaining in the match. Michael Dagner trying to take the ball up. Here's Sonny McGrath. McGrath racing away, hitting it inside there. Ben O'Connor's after the goalkeeper came, didn't collect, and it goes wide. It was a chance. Ten wides now for Cork. Of course, they had 19 in the Munster final. It still went on to win. So this awfully lady here, I'm sure having her fingers crossed that the side can hold on to their lead and go through to another All-Ireland final. What a record that would be. A small base of hurlers in a small county. And they've performed wonders over the last 20 years. That's Wayne Sherlock doing his own, own performing of wonders. Up to Kevin Murray, and that's a fine strike. Kevin Murray puts it over the bar. Both court forward subs have now scored since coming in. And the gap is down to a solitary point. This was the product of some very good and strong running here on the part of Kevin Murray. Took his man out of position struck it over his left-hand side. Well, the mentors are now thinking about uh, a possible other change, and it looks like it could be Johnny Sheehan is about to come in. St. Catherine's man. Meanwhile, the race for possession in midfield. Michael Dignan trying to win that against Mark Landers. Lobbing it in there. A bit of work here in the corner for Joe Dooley to do, but he's beaten for it by Fergal Ryan. Nicely outside here, stopped by Paddy Mulher. One back, however, and that's away by Mark Landers. Brian Wheelahan. Johnny Dooley here contesting at midfield. Shawnee McGrath seems to have gone back towards midfield. That, that ball is dropped in, saved by the goalkeeper, Donalo Cusack. And beating Joe Dooley to that one. This is Johnny Dooley. Both sides looking now for a very strong finish. Here's Dermot O'Sullivan. 
played in nicely. Bit of work here for Simon Wheelahan to do. Getting there ahead of Jodine. Fergal McCormack. Lobbed in towards Ben O'Connor. Murray's there as well. Keenahan makes a wonderful catch. Some great defending by players on both teams this afternoon. Full credit to both sides. So well prepared. And that ball is picked off the ground there by John Troy. He's protesting that there was a little hop on it. His protest once again in vain. So let's go back to the sideline for some more information for Marty. Just uh, one last change in the court team. Mickey O'Connell has been taken off and Johnny Sheehan from the St. Catharines Club was introduced. All right, will the change then made? And this free to be taken by Joe Dean. So that's the confirmation of uh, Johnny Sheehan's appearance here. Joe Dean taking plenty of time with this one. About 50 metres out, struck well and put over the bar and the sides are level yet again. Nine points now for Joe Dean and the team's level now six times in the game and only five minutes still to play. Well, they're all enjoying it, living on their nerves I'm sure as well. But once again the Guinness All-Ireland Championship has served up a thriller. Shawnee McGrath back in midfield, tripped back to O'Halpine, across towards Ben O'Connor. Martin Hanami coming out to try and make something of a challenge, and he has fouled Ben O'Connor, and it's a free into Cork. And once again, Michael Dignan's back protesting that there was a, an earlier foul on himself involving uh, a trip. He's still arguing. Martin Hanami is uh, looking curiously at the referee. A free into court. Joe Dean will take it. Score of nine points so far. Seven of them frees. This is 10-3 of the match. That's the angle that confronts him. And he's put it to the right. He's put it wide. They seem to think that uh, the ball has gone over the bar, but it is still 16 points apiece. We were directly in line with it here, and uh, absolutely no doubt about it. It was a couple of inches outside the right-hand post, and no protest from Dean. Well, now, possession absolutely vital here. Johnny Dooley trying to link up with a colleague. Instead, it's belted away. Up once more towards Ben O'Connor. O'Connor taking on Hanami. And it's like the score he got in the Munster final because he's rejoicing again, jumping for joy like the fans. Ben O'Connor's second point. This time, absolutely no doubt about the validity. Very reminiscent of the point he got against Clare. And now that's two in this match for young Ben O'Connor. He was playing in a vocational schools final only two years ago. Caught by just a point. But still... All to play for, all to fight for. Three minutes left. Johnny Dooley, I'm sure looking for one last big push from his colleagues here to retain their interest in this year's championship. But the All-Ireland champions are being led by the Munster champions. Joe Dean fouled but given an advantage. The hand pass outside here from McCormack as far as Mark Landers Brian Wilhelm gets it back and Offaly can turn this possession now into a chance but it's once again the marvellous Brian Corcoran denying the possession denying them space firing this one himself high in front of the goalkeeper down it comes towards McGrath and it's gone wide just for a moment there there was a possible goal chance for Cork but real pressure on Stephen Burns' goal, and the defenders did really well on this misty afternoon here. It came down, and McGraw was on hand, but he puts it outside. At the other end, it's John Brown. Linking up here with Sean O'Gohalpine. Cork, who haven't been in the All-Ireland Final since 1992, with just a very slender lead. 
Fergal McCormick tried to widen that advantage, and Fergal McCormick has put it over the bar. Two points for Fergal McCormick. Celebration time for the fans. And Offaly will now probably feel that they need to get a goal. Here's Johnny Pilkington taking on Wayne Sherlock. Still Pilkington lacking assistance just now, running right in there. Being helped, and it's outside, and it's wide. Oof, real pressure on Donald O'Cusack's goal. The charge led there by Johnny Pilkington. Joe Dooley pointing out a few things to some of the other lads up front with him. This was that run, as we're in now to the 70th minute, and that's how close they managed to go. But Offley need a goal, otherwise it looks like it's going to be Cork. Pressure back on the half-back line once again. Alan Brown knocking it ahead, stopped there by Simon Wheelahan. Back to Johnny Dooley once again. This surely has to be it, away from Dermot O'Sullivan that time. They get it back once again, outside by Paddy Mulher to John Troy. Troy loving it, stopped by the goalkeeper. Two ugly men in after him, and a clearance by Donal Cusack. Down towards the cork inside forward line, inside towards Joe Dean. He has support in the shape of Ben O'Connor. O'Connor's to his left, Dean trying for the shot himself, but where he would be hooked by uh, Kevin Martin. Turns around beautifully, he puts it over the bar. Ten points for Joe Dean. Is that now enough? Deep in injury time. 19 points to 16. Oh, Johnny Pilkin gets to drop down. Joe Dooley's after the man who played in the All Ireland final against Cork all of 15 years ago. Dropped inside there. Offaly players get it. Mulher has a shot. It's blocked. Comes back down against Rashad O'Gohal Bean. Coming out next, John Brown. It's Wayne Sherlock, in fact, and Sherlock gets the ball out. The whistle goes. It's all over. And Cork are through to the All Ireland final after a most dramatic and exciting, tense and wonderful game of hurling in the Skinness Hurling Championship. Cork go through. Offaly have been mighty champions. They won it to the backdoor system last year. And it's celebration time for Jimmy Barry Murphy, for the Cork fans as well here. And the fans up on Hill 16 in the new stand as well, supporting the red and white. And the match ended. Cork, the winners by three points, 19 points to Offaly's 16. And let's go down to Marty. Thank you very much, Chair. Wonderful day for Cork. Jimmy Barry Murphy. That was a great game, Marty. Fairness. Offaly are tremendous all Ireland champions. And at one stage in the second half, it looked like we might pull away, but they really put it up to us. And uh, we we're very lucky to escape for a win in the end, I think. This is a wonderful victory because it was really put up to you today. Well, Offaly are a tough team, uh, experienced team, and they certainly weren't going to give us anything easy. And they went down like great champions that they are. Certainly, tactically, you played it very cute along the sideline, trying to feed the ball in low to Dean and McGrath. Well, we, did, we didn't play particularly well in the second half, I didn't think, Marty. And uh, yeah, the, our, our ambitious to play the ball in low but doesn't always work. You're in the All-Ireland final. It's been a long time, and for you personally, it's a wonderful achievement. Well, I'm glad, Marty, from the supporters and the players especially. It's great to be in the All-Ireland final. Well done, Jimmy, very much, and congratulations, Thank Cork. Thank you, Marty. So Cork indeed are into the All-Ireland Final. As you know, the uh, rule here at Cork Park these days is that the supporters are being asked to stay off the field, so there isn't a big rush in to congratulate them, but I'm sure these players will be well congratulated all this evening and all this week on what has been a fantastic achievement. Well, I don't know about you, but from my point of view, that was one of the most enjoyable games of hurling I've seen for such a long time. Cyril Farrell and Tomás McGahey enjoyed it alongside me here as well, especially Tomás McGahey. But Cyril Farrell, it was a game full of pure quality scores all the way through. It was a fantastic game of Michael, because I think people maybe sitting at home don't realise the conditions that were here today. It was wet, it was windy. But a great game, fantastic scores from both sides. And like, you'd have to congratulate Cork. They came out of Pine Town. First 10 minutes kind of went on top. You think into overdrive, they were going to win, kind of cruise past them. But Offaly were great champions. Like, no mistake, that was a great Offaly team. Came back and took control for a long time. But Cork's quality hurling in game got them. And, like, they have, they have the forwards right to do it. 
uh, midfield today probably wouldn't be the best for Cork as such, right? but they're, they're in an All-Ireland final now and like, it's, going to take, it's going to take a great team to stop them from now on. Well, it certainly is that Tomás Mulcahy. I know you were nervous through that, you were tense towards the end, but you made it. Yeah, I mean, I nearly jumped out, I jumped out of here on the last ball there, I actually shaved the post in my mind, but uh, I mean, it's a great victory for Cork, but I think you've got to give great credit to Offaly, and uh, they've been tremendous All-Ireland champions, played like true champions today, and uh, I mean, a lot of speculation coming into the game, the injuries of Hubert Rigney and Kevin Martin, they played very, very well today as well, and uh, I'm sure they'd be disappointed because they gave her everything they had over that 70 minutes, and uh, there was only a puck of the ball in it at the end, and uh, Cork, I'm sure, will, will, will need to improve if they're to go on and win the All-Ireland final, but they're in the All-Ireland final final first time in seven years and it's a great achievement for Jimmy Barry Muffin and his team. It was a great game to win Cyril Farrell. It was terrible to see a side lose a game like that though. Yeah, I felt genuinely sorry for Offaly because I think all the years, Michael, they haven't really got the credit that they deserve and they are very, very worthy champions up to this. Oh, OK, they've gone down today, but as, as uh, Jim Barry Murphy said there, they went down with honour. They played like champions should play. They never resorted to any kind of a dirty stroke. They took it on the chin. And like uh, with, with, with five or six minutes to go, you could call, you, you, you could say like either team, if you're lucky, both sides to say a draw will do us today. But like Cork were fresh, uh, very sharp forwards. Like, and you know, like once they got, kind of got their little nose in front at all, it was going to be very hard to stop. But having said that, Tomás, I suppose, tactically, you couldn't fault either side or look at any particular thing and say this is where the match was won or lost because it was such a helter-skelter battle, like up and down the field all day long. Yes, and I suppose Affley will say to themselves, maybe we conceded a lot of frees to Jodine, and Jodine got seven points from frees, and they were all maybe in around the, 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 the half-hour full forward line, so they did give away a few frees and, and situations like that. A uh, difficult job for, for a referee today, Dickie Murphy to referee with the greasy ball and the situation that it was. Tomás, the blitz that Cork put out on straight after half-time is what did it. This is one of the scores now, this is Brown's score. Yeah, I said Brown would make a difference after half-time and they used him very effectively to put the ball down on top of his head from every chance from the puck out. And here we see him winning a great position and striking a great point. And that was the panic start Cork needed just after half-time. But Offaly were given nothing up in this game, even though Cork were getting some quality scores through that second half, sir, they kept coming back and then we saw Troy steal the ball at one stage and get a great score. Yeah, well, Offaly are a good soldier, like, and, and this young uh, Simon Wheeler, he had a great game, but here you can see him walking up here, and Brian Cochran actually is on this, he wants to drive it a mile, John Troy slips in, tick, 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 taps it away, and straight over the bar, fantastic skill. Like, these fellas have a great skill, Troy, the duelies, uh, Johnny Pilk, and all these, like, you know, they lack nothing in the skills, and Brian was going for a mile, and he just, you know, got caught, great point. You're making the point, Tomás, that at midfield, Cork didn't do as well as expected. I mean, Pilkington had a fabulous game in there, and this is a, a great individual score, I suppose. It's a, a brilliant score. Here again, Brian Cochran is robbed by John Troy, who seems very effective in being able to do situations like this, and picks out Johnny Pilkington in the centre. Great control, takes the knock, and this is a great point for Offaly. Uh, Offaly seem to be able to score at will from midfield and get three or four points between Johnny Dooley and Johnny Pilkington, and then that was an excellent point by Johnny Pilkington. Well, the scores were either level or appointed one way or the other, Cyril all the way through. Then came Ben O'Connor's score, and this, I suppose, was the decisive one because this was the lead for Cork, he didn't give up there. I suppose, Jimmy, Barry Murphy had dreams. Ben O'Connor did this the very same thing in the Munster final. He has feet, and he had the feet in hand me as well, like, and, you know, they switched over Young Wheel and, and uh, Sean McGrath. But here you can see this ball breaks here, looking on pull here, and about just sends it across here. Comes, once it comes over, he has the pace. Now he gets it up. Thinks about taking him on, he thinks about running out, and instead he steps back, takes a fantastic stroke on his usual wrist, right over the bar, a replica of what he did against Clare in the Munster final. He's capable of doing that. To see, Hanami thought he was going to take him on fully, but from the sideline, which is an art in itself, that's hard to find 50 yards out, fantastic score, nothing you can do about it. And then, as you said, Tomás, like at the end, I suppose, of Cork's forwards, being the lighter, being the nippier, they were able to sort of keep the pressure on then. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I know Jimmy said there he was disappointed with the second half performance, but in conditions like this, to, to, to mass the tally that they did, it was, it was good for the Cork forwards. Uh, everybody doesn't play up to scratch on, on, on our own semi-final there, our own final day. I mean, you're going to have players who will be disappointed. But I mean, up front, Joe Dean carried that full forward line very, very well. And he looks very dangerous once he gets in possession. And uh, he, he got some great scores for them today. Shiny McGrath got some very, very good points as well. And he was moved out midfield, out towards half hour line in the, in the second half. That seemed to, seemed to suit his play as well. And uh, certainly Cork um, will be very, very happy tonight. I mean, uh, it's a first all Ireland final for a long, long time. And um, they'll go away knowing that they need to improve for the next day, whether it will be Kilkenny or Clare in the final. Well, to most, the statistics have been compiled, and the statistic that means more than anything down in Cork this evening anyway is the first one on the screen. 19 points to 16, the final score. No goals in this match, which I think is amazing given the nature of the play, and it was such hectic stuff up and down the field, but uh, ball never went into the back of the net. 17 frees to Cork, 
13 to Offaly. Uh, the 12 wides to Cork and 7 to uh, Offaly. Still those 265s from the first half. And Joe Dooley, the only one to get a yellow card, and that, I suppose, was harmless enough uh, in its own right. Let's go back again to Marty Morrissey. Thank you very much, Michael. Brian Corcoran is with me. Some performance, Brian, and uh, a great achievement. Yeah, we came up to win. Um, we knew we were playing a very formidable team in Offaly. Uh, you know, people were saying that the conditions weren't going to suit us, but uh, we felt that we had as good a chance as Offaly had. And, uh, you know, I think we showed a bit of character there coming up to the end. In fairness to Offaly, they, they showed why, why they're all Ireland champions. They went to the better end, and, you know, we were lucky enough that they didn't scrape a goal in the last couple of minutes. But, uh, you know, it's the kind of game that it's brilliant to win, it's terrible to lose. And, you know, it's an all Ireland semi final. We're delighted to be through. It's the uh, first time in a long time, and uh, we're really looking forward to the final now. And uh, let's be honest, the weather really didn't suit you in terms of your skills, your wrist work. A dry day would be far better. It would, but to be fair, I don't think it suited awfully either. Um, you know, they're a very good hurling team. And, uh, but, you know, you have to put up the conditions that you're given. There's another in semi-final, 70 minutes. You know, we didn't care if it was snowing as long as we came away with a victory. And uh, thankfully we have, and we're looking forward to five weeks' time. But you're the most, one of the most experienced members of this team. To win here in Croke Park in an All-Ireland semi-final will really cement the status of this team and indeed the, the self-confidence. Yeah, you know, we've been knocking at the door now for the last couple of years in Munster. We made the breakthrough this year and, uh, you know, it's terrible to lose in the semi-final. And, uh, you know, at least we've got to the final now. It's a tremendous occasion and, uh, you know, we have a lot of young players in our team and it will be a great experience for them. Well done today, uh, Brian. We all enjoyed seeing you play mm -hmm. such a great game of hurling. Shawnee McGrath is with us in the oh, Nuffley yeah, jersey. <laughs> They'll be singing the banks tonight, Shawnee. I would say so, Marty. Uh, this means an awful lot to, to people in Cork. Um, Cork hurling has been definitely in the doldrums over the last couple of years. But we felt that we had a team that could really make progress this year. And our objective at the start of the year was to get to Crow Park. And now that we've got to Crow Park, we got a bit greedy and a bit selfish. We wanted to get to the final. And um, I think our hunger probably showed in the end that it was a great win for Cork. You weren't in any way intimidated. Here's a new team. I know the Munster Championship victory would have uh, brought on the, your self-confidence, but to take on the All-Ireland Champions here in Croke Park? Um, yeah, I think there's a great self-belief within the team. Um, obviously, there's a massive respect. It's always the same with, with inter-county players. Like, um, every player has fierce respect for, for the other player, you know. But um, you have to have a, a massive self-belief, you know. I think we had that within our team. We never really spoke about the opposition before any training session. We took it as another game. and. Um, Again, uh, you know, towards the end of the game today, you know, we had great hunger and we just drove on and we weren't afraid to take on Affiliate at the end. Two points for Shawnee McGrath, you did well. Yeah, um, I suppose conditions wouldn't suit me, you know, but I still was happy enough for my performance. I was very happy, really. I was on Martin Hennemey, a hurler, you know, who I have unbelievable respect for. He's as tight a cornerback as you're going to get. It was my first time on him. Um, and I really was relishing playing against, you know, the likes of Martin Hennemey because for every hurler you want to play, you want to play the elite, you know. And to be on the same field as the likes of, you know, John Troy, Johnny Pickington, Brian Wheelhin and Martin Henry. It was a joy for me today. You know. I have to ask you, who would you prefer in the All-Ireland final? Claire Kilkenny? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're two superb teams, you know. Um, Kilkenny, I suppose, are traditionalists and of the last five or six years, actually, or Claire, sorry, have been a team to beat. They've been awesome, you know. Um, I mean, our display against been the most, most final. You know, you could put down to an offset, awfully. I mean, or, sorry, against, you know, for Clare. Um, the first day against Galway, they weren't great. And then they came out the second day and they were awesome. So, you know, either team, whether it's going to be Clare or Kilkenny, is going to be a huge task for Cork. Well, well done to Shani McGrath and indeed congratulations to Cork. Great, thanks very much. Yes, yeah, Cyril Farrell, I suppose the prospects are still there. This could yet be a Clare Cork or Ireland final. Well, it could be, like, but it doesn't matter whether it's Kilkenny Cork or Clare Cork. Like, the game that was played today, like, in the conditions that were there, it was an unbelievable type of game. And I don't think it's right to let it pass without playing tribute to Like They've been great ambassadors. OK, they'll have the papers tomorrow suggesting who's going to retire. They've been there for a good while. That's the usual thing. None of them will retire. They, don't, they, have not, they have nothing to prove to anyone. This Cork team are coming. Mm. They're a young team. Jim Barry Murphy is four years at the, you know, at the helm trying to get them right. And this is the first year that he's really made a break through a monster. And now he's in the All-Ireland final. You could see today coming up at Samoa Stadium in the morning. Like, it was unusual that Cork travelled in such numbers uh, to, to an All-Ireland semi final. I remember a few years ago we played them here. And there was very yeah. few in the back. But it just showed you the hunger that's there. And I believe like, maybe a bit of that atmosphere got through to the players today starting off. That I know down in Cork, some supporters, they wouldn't hear the 
feet. That thing is very dangerous. Now, going into the final, they'll know that they'll have to be kind of aware of it. Because, like today, like awfully for long periods, we're dominant. And uh, Jim Barry Murphy won't be. He'll be very, very happy. But he knows, like, around the middle of the field, like, you know, Mickey O'Connell got a lot of press. And it's very hard to live with that kind of stuff. And you're up against Pilkington and Dooley. These lads have been around a long time and very shrewd, very cute horrors. I'm sure they'll be, they'll be very, they'll want to be very focused for the Ireland Ireland Because, like, no matter who comes into it, Cocker knew they'll want, to, they'll want to win it. And so are the people. The will of the people of Cocker will completely behind them. But whether it is Clare or Kilkenny, they're, they're, they're very seasoned as well like and it, it's going to be some final. Well, Cork have come a long way to us this year. What's been the difference this year to the last couple of years when the players were there obviously? Just a little bit more maturity perhaps was it? I think so yeah and uh, they brought in a new team physical our team trainer uh, at the start of this year as well Ted Owens and he's made a huge difference to the team as well. They're, they're a lot fitter than they have been over the previous years. Um, they've blended together as a team. I mean they've played minor together under 21 level together but there's no guarantee that you get success. From, from those grades when you go up to senior level, yeah. so they've had to wait their time. Um, they're coming and coming nicely, as, as, as Cyril has said, but like, when you put 15 on the team, you've got to play as a unit. You've got to play as a 15-man team, 16-man or the two substitutes that they introduced today. And Cork, uh, it, uh, on the last few occasions that I've seen, are blending together as a team, and they're a united bunch. They're very, very hungry, very eager for success. They don't seem to fear anything at the moment. I mean, the tradition of the Kikennies or the Clares at this stage in the Munster final, they didn't hold back on that, and didn't, they didn't allow the reputations actually upset them. Um, all our final day is going to be a massive, massive occasion and how they handle it in the next number of weeks will depend on the likes of the team management, Johnny Crowley, Tom Cashman, they've all been there before and uh, the, 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 the occasion is getting bigger by the year all our final day so it's going to be a huge, huge occasion for them. You see, there will be a big lot of hype now over the next three weeks down in Cork leading up to this All-Ireland final. And that's something they're going to have to guard against, obviously, which wouldn't affect, say, Clare in the same way, and presumably not Kilkenny. And particularly if Cork to beat me on the football semi-final as well, you of know. Of course, so yes, yeah. Um, so, I mean, there will be, and that's, that's, that's the, the job of management and the team trainers and things like that, to actually be able to get the players to cope with situations like that. OK, thanks, gentlemen, for the moment. Let's go back again to Marty Morrissey or somebody else to talk to. Thanks, Michael. Mickey O'Connell is joining me now. A great celebration, jubilation, indeed, in the Cork dressing room. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's an absolute fabulous occasion, I think, for, for the county of Cork to be in an All-Ireland final. Like, um, I know it was, a, it was a bad day maybe for hurling and, and people maybe, maybe thought with the weather and everything like that, that the more experienced team uh, would come out on top. Like, but um, at times maybe they did dominate, like, but um, I think the hungrier team won in the day like, and um, I'm absolutely delighted for, for all the lads and, and for the fans. There was a hunger in County Cork as well. 16,000 uh, tickets sold before the game for an All-Ireland semi-final. Yeah, it is absolutely support. I mean, we knew like training during the week, like this week, like that there was a, a fabulous atmosphere down in Cork, like you know, and uh, we knew there was a lot of tickets sold. But Jimmy told us keep that out of your mind, like uh, just and, and don't be in awe of this great stadium, like I mean, like uh, just because you can play in Turles and maybe you can't come and play in Crow Park, and maybe that's evident the way I played, like. But I mean, um, we all have to to do it again now the next day, like you know, and. Um, Whichever team it is, and we just hopefully like that, uh, that we can we can do um, we can do it. Like, you know. One very quick question: an emotional day for you because you've come from being out of the court panel before Waterford. Now you're in an All Ireland final. Yeah, I suppose uh, the reason that that I did come back at the start of the year. I mean, granted, you would have a bit of bitterness or whatever, like. But the reason I came kind of talking to my father and my mother and whatever, like uh, friends, saying if I was to be sitting down in front of the telly or up in the Hill 16 watching an all and fine watching all my friends out there. I mean, there was a thing that I, that I had to do, like that I had to go back, and um, I'm absolutely delighted now I went back. I could never foresee like that that I would be playing in an all and fine, like so. Um, I'm absolutely delighted. Well, well done, Mickey O'Connell. Well done, Cork again. Yes, Mickey O'Connell there, who was removed from the fray today, but nonetheless played his part on this Cork panel and getting them into their first All-Ireland final since the early 90s. OK, that's more or less it then from Crow Park, uh, from this first Guinness All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. As I said, a game that we thoroughly enjoyed here. And if uh, next week's other semi-final is anything like that, then we're going to have another great game and the prospect of some fantastic All-Ireland final in itself. We're not finished, of course, with the action from this semi-final here on RTE Television today because, as usual, the Sunday game will be along later on tonight with highlights of the game itself. We will have further analysis from the panel. We'll have our face in the crowd and, of course, also a very popular feature of our later programme, and that is our naming of Man of the Match from this semi-final. Plenty of candidates for that, there's no doubt about it. Who it'll be? Well, you can find out later on.
Okay, then that's it from uh, Cyril Farr, from Tomás McCahy and myself. Until we meet you later on, 9.30 on Network 2 for the Sunday game. Bye-bye from all of us here at Croke Park.